Paul Hammes, Global Divestiture Advisory Leader at EY. Nice to see you at the Deal Economy once again. Nice to see you, Rhonda, as always. Thanks for having me today. Let's talk about why companies should consider divesting and what's changed in the past year. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Those are good questions. And I think before I do that, I probably should set the table a little bit uh, because some of the things I'm going to say come from our global corporate divestment study in 2016. Um, in that study, it surveyed 1,000 senior executives, 900 from corporate, 100 from private equity. We covered 56 countries. We did nine industry sectors and 82% of our respondents were from the C-suite. So right where we want to be. And th that study, Rhonda, 49% of our respondents came back and said they're looking at divesting in the next two years. So not an insignificant number. And why? And this seems counterintuitive. They've basically said they're divesting to fund growth. And what do we mean by growth? Well, of those 70% in terms of respondents, 39 came back and said they're investing in the core business. 20% said, we're acquiring a new product, a market, what have you. And 11% said, hey, we're working on funding an acquisition with these proceeds, which is actually the number one way to increase your valuation multiple as a remaining business post-close. So there's a lot of reasons to do it. You can create a lot of shareholder value. So what benefits do they see afterwards? Do they achieve the value that they're striving for? Well, you know, I'll come back to the study again. 84% of our respondents said they believe their divestment created long-term value for the business, which I think speaks volumes. And I think the other thing there, Rhonda, is right now the markets love a big transformational deal. They just love it. And there's a big difference in a company's valuation multiple post-close if you divest 5% of your business versus 10 or 20. Divesting 10 or 20, those transformational type deals, result in a valuation multiple that's just exponential. But how does a company decide what to divest and when to do it? Well, you know, it, that, it's so difficult, right? We just talked about that in the panel discussion. So as in, in EY, we have something we call a successful divester or a high performer. And that's somebody that meets timing ahead of expectations. Uh, their proceeds are ahead of expectations, which as I've said before, who doesn't like more cash? And is in a position where their valuation multiple goes up post-close. So those three criteria. Only 19% of our survey respondents were actually successful, or those high performers. And why not? Over 50% said they held onto their assets for too long. So what do you do? You gotta cut those apron strings, right? One way or another. Um, what do you do? You focus on the portfolio review, right? Review that portfolio regularly, do it quarterly. We saw with our respondents over 30% of them fall in that high performer category when they do it quarterly as opposed to annually. Second, secondarily, look, fail to prepare, prepare to fail, right? You really need to get behind the data in your business, right? There's so much data available today, even over the course of the last year, right? Digital, just the amount of big data that's out there, all these things are just driving all these changes. You need to get into a position where you are never put by a buyer in a position where they're telling you something about your business that you don't know. So get behind all that data, do analytics on that data, figure out what it's telling you. Absolutely critically important, not only for you, buyers today are demanding it, both private equity and, for, and corporate. So then after a divestiture, what are the top three things the company should be doing? So when you think about a divestiture and the top three things a company should do, number one, people get very starry-eyed, right? They start to focus on the remainder of the organization. What am I going to do with that capital, et cetera, et cetera? You know, it, it's really important you focus on that organization and continue to create value. Continue to create value until it's off your books, right? If I go back to our survey again, over 75% of our respondents generated a sales price above expectations when they focused on that business. So, so keep focused, critically important. Number two, put together an operational separation plan, right? What do I mean by that? A holistic plan that looks at finance, looks at tax, and looks at operational considerations, very holistically, in terms of what do you need to do to separate that business. Buyers do not want to be in a position, particularly with a corporate carve out, where they believe it's a hairy deal, right? It's going to take a lot to get it done, both in terms of effort and time. They don't want that, right? So thinking about that plan, what are the financial statement requirements, audited financial statements versus deal? How do you put them together? What's the perimeter of the business? What, what are you going to do from a tax perspective? How does that impact supply chain? How are you going to control tax leakage? 
Operationally, what's the perimeter? Regulatorily, what are we going to do? TSAs, how are we going to price them? Thinking about that plan is absolutely critical. And then lastly, your management team has to be in it to win it. There's no two ways around it. Both our private equity respondents to the survey, Rhonda, as well as our corporate respondents, one of the top things in terms of keeping them in is that management quality and commitment. So it's critical. Paul Ham, it's always a pleasure to see you here. Thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. My pleasure.